really to find out what the imbalances are and to try to correct them. And that's really the focus of what we do here. So those sensors, that's what they're for. Um, what are the things you watch out for? Um, it's not when you're, it's, it's not, it's not when you're having pain when you're at rest, because really nobody has pain when they're at rest. It's only when you're doing things. So really pay attention to when you're doing something. When does it hurt? Um, did you lose any uh, velocity? Did you lose control of your throwing? Because those are all some kind of like, you know, signs that could be warning you that you should look into this. Don't wait until you know the game's over. You don't hurt anymore, and don't ba don't ba base your decision on that because obviously you, know, you never hurt if you're not doing anything. So it's important just to kind of keep in mind. You know, why that's important is because you know, there's so many athletes that have great potential, but because of injuries, they kind of fall by the wayside, you know what I mean? So, you know, two things you have to do to get, you know, to get to the top. One is to be really good. Second is try not to get hurt, you know? So that's why this slide is important, I think, because sometimes we kind of push through things, we just kind of ignore things, and, uh, you know, much to our detriment, you know? Let me skip a couple of slides to save you guys some time. All right. Here's a slide on prevention. Remember what we were doing out there with the core strengthening? Usually when I think of core strengthening, yoga, Pilates, anything with core, I actually think of that picture. I don't know why, but I just think of, you know, something that doesn't seem very hard, just something that seems, uh, you know, something, you know, no offense to women, that, but that women might do more than guys. I just think that. I don't know why that is. Um, but that's actually, you know, probably not that correct because a lot of it has to do with our mindset. If, if something seems very easy and you try it, but you were prepared for something easy, it's actually really hard to do. Like if you think, oh, this is a piece of cake, it actually turns out sometimes harder. And sometimes it's better to psych yourself up and think, you know what, this is going to be hard, so I'm going to work my hardest, and I'm going to, I'm going to do it. Uh, and that mindset is really important. I think, having done it myself, I think actually that's pretty hard. Um, and and uh, stretching, same thing. Stretching sounds easy, but you know, when you stretch to the point where it hurts and you keep it there, it really hurts. I mean, it's not easy. It's, it's actually very hard. Um, I got this from the MMA website, one of the MMA websites. Here's a guy who obviously needs to stretch, otherwise he wouldn't be able to do that, and has a strong core. And I think that's, that's the mindset that I would have, you know, rather than thinking, oh, this is, this is uh, the core strength is not important. I would say it's very important. Uh, everybody can do this exercise. It's something that you guys do. Um, this, this exercise is a, is a test of endurance. It's also, you know, not just a test, but a, um, but a strengthening exercise for endurance and your core. Um, some people can hold this for as many minutes as they can pitch. So for, for pitchers, not to pick up pitchers, but uh, some elite pitchers, if they have to pitch seven innings, are expected to do this for seven minutes. So, um, and it's actually very possible. We did a uh, competition in our office uh, among patients, and the, the record for men was seven minutes and 33 seconds, and the record for women was seven minutes and 32 seconds. So, I mean, I mean it hurts though. I mean, you guys done it. You know, after a minute, I start sweating. After two minutes, my arms are shaking. After two and a half minutes, I'm like, the timer must be broken. Because <laughs> it's like, it's like click, click. Oh, back to this. This, is a, this slide is really to show you that your core is not about what it looks like on the outside. You can't see somebody's core necessarily. Um, you can't judge a book by its cover. When you look at a, a rice rocket like this, you know, you, you, know you, you, might, you might think if you're not experienced, like, ah, this car is probably fast, but anybody that knows anything about, I think it's Honda Civic, knows that the engine in there is only like 120 horsepower, so it's not gonna be all that fast. So, so your core, think about your core. You're gonna, work on the, you're gonna work on the engine that drives you. So that's the engine that drives your throwing, that's the engine that drives your hitting, so that's very important for, for you guys. Uh, stretching. Again, remember when we were talking about open pelvis, so when you're throwing, um, stretching is very important for that. Uh, your legs, your pelvis, your hips, um, the ability to take a long stride when you're throwing, important as well to generate velocity, so if you can't do that unless you're stretched out pretty good. Um, internal external rotation, Dr. Mandel will go over that a little bit with you as well. There's a picture of uh, strengthening exercises with Mac. Matt's just, I just asked him to do a couple of things for me. Um, I didn't save all the videos, but 
This is an example of an exercise just working on his rotator cuff, the front part of his rotator cuff. I would have him turn around the opposite and start pulling on it the other way, this way. Work at it both 90 degrees here and at your side, because that's, you know, that's important for preventing your injuries of your rotator cuff as well. This is a good slide because you know these two these two arrows down here are probably the most commonly missed um, muscles in, in, in uh, people that I see. Um, you know, as guys when we work out, we work out in front of the gym, right? Uh, in front of the mirror, right? Of the gym. That's why they have the mirror so you can make sure you're doing the form right and all that. The problem with that, it's not a problem, but the, the thing that happens is we focus on our front a lot. You know, the things that we can see up here. You know what I mean? We don't have, if we had eyes in the back of our heads and not in the front of our heads, I bet everybody's back would be huge. And we'd have like weak pecs, you know what I mean? Because we focus on what we see. So if you don't see it, kind of ignore it. But this is a, just a rule of thumb. For every exercise that you do in front, try to do on the back. Because you might work with a trainer or a therapist. And they might say, you know what, you're weak. But what they mean is your relative you know, that the front of you will say is way stronger than the back of you. That's not good. You want to be symmetrical. You want to be an ideal body. You know? So that's what they mean when they're saying weak. So never get offended if somebody says you're weak. They just mean you're strong, you're just weak right there, you know, uh, relatively speaking. So those those two, those two can cause your scapula. If you're weak there, your scapula and it happens to even me. Happens to everybody. Your scapula will actually come off the come off of your your, your rib cage. You know, it's called leaning of the scapula. And most guys have a certain extent to that. And if you want to get true power, true um, symmetry, you want to get the scapula close against your body. All right. So how do you know if you're um, getting hurt? You got to trust your body. There's good pain, like workout pain. There's bad pain. When you have bad pain, you know, I'm not saying don't see your trainer, but physical therapist would probably be more appropriate. Because when you have bad pain, you mean pain that's like, this is different. This is not something I usually have. That, that's a, that's, a, that's a, usually a sign that you should really, you know, treat it differently. Don't treat it like, I'm just going to work through the pain. If it feels different, kind of keep that in mind. Notice, notice it and just make a mental note and say, you know what, I want to do this just in the butt. I don't want this to turn into a real pain. You might want to be a physical therapist. Just other toys, I got more not just masculine. We like that. But sounds good. It's not. Sometimes you know, there's a fork in the road. You got a trainer, physical therapist for injuries. Big physical therapy is better. It's better for that. Once you're better, go back to training. It was just something that you put in the window or something like that. So what's PRP? PRP is something we do. Because surgery is not always the answer. Not not everybody needs surgery. I'm not against surgery, but surgery sometimes is not the best answer. 